So yeah, the title of this video is not clickbait. I actually did sell my A7S III to buy the Blackmagic 6K Pro, Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. It's a mouthful. We're just gonna call it the 6K Pro, right? Or the Blackmagic. However, I didn't abandon Sony. I still use Sony, so it's a little clickbaity, I guess, in some ways, but the fact of the matter is, I have an FX6 and an FX3 that I primarily use for video and will continue to primarily use those for professional video work. I have the a7 IV, which is what we're recording on now, that's my photo camera along with my a9 II. So I'm still heavily invested in the Sony system. So before you attack me and tell me how stupid I am for selling the a7S III for the, the Blackmagic, just, just understand why. Let's talk about why. For me, the a7S III just kind of became redundant. I felt like it, FX3 did everything that it did for me, and the FX6 did everything that neither the FX3 or the a7S III did for me. And I didn't really find myself using the a7S III very much anymore. I used it occasionally for some photos. With buying the a7IV, I felt like I really didn't need the a7S III anymore, because this is going to replace any time I would have used the a7S III for for photos. It's going to be the a7IV now. I can put this a7IV on a gimbal and get amazing images. But then the big thing was, I've always kind of been curious about this Blackmagic 6K Pro. It, it's something that kind of intrigued me. I almost bought it instead of buying my FX3 or FX6, to be honest with you. I just, I've always been intrigued by this camera. I had a friend, he let me borrow his recently for a weekend. I used it for about an hour, came inside, checked out the footage, got it into DaVinci and started grading it pretty much closed DaVinci and went on Adorama and ordered one of these guys right then and there with the Sigma 18 to 35 and told him, Hey, I'll bring it back tomorrow. I ordered one because this thing is pretty cool. Now I'm currently rocking it with this ice contacts, uh, 28 millimeter F 2.8. I found that I really am kind of getting into vintage lenses with this thing. And that's a lot of fun. As you can see, I, I didn't rig it out. I got a, a peak design strap on it here. I got a little, um, tilt a hand strap and the small rig cage that came with it just so I can hook the strap to the side. That's it. I'm going to keep it like this. I run it with the regular batteries. Yeah, they last about an hour or so. I've been walking around today with it, filming some of the shots that I'm probably showing you now. Uh, I'm in Blue Ridge, Georgia, by the way, if you can't tell, I'm not in my house. It's a little colder here, but this is where I'm at. I've carried this thing around. I've got two extra batteries in my pocket. I haven't even switched them out yet. Just, you know, taking little shots. So what this camera is going to be for me is kind of like this sort of travel camera when I want to do creative projects, maybe. I just, I really like it. I'm telling you, it's, the ND is nice. The image, the codec. Now, I know people are going to say it's not real raw and B-Raw is not real raw. Call it whatever you will. It's very, very flexible, very easy on the computer. That image looks good. I don't care what you say. There's a million videos about this thing out there with specs and settings and all that stuff. I'm not even getting into that. I'm just going to tell you what I like about it. Hey guys, I just wanted to come in here. As I was editing this video, I realized I left a couple things out about what I like about the Blackmagic camera. So I thought I'd mention them here. My videos are pretty much unscripted and I just speak from the perspective of a person who buys things with their own money. And I try not to overcomplicate things or make things, you know, so overly technical. But sometimes I forget things. So I just wanted to mention one of the other things that I failed to mention of why I like the Blackmagic camera so much is that menu system. The menus are just amazing in this camera. You know, I started on Canon. They had really good menus, which to Sony and their menus were difficult. But once you get the hang of really any camera system, their menus are not that difficult to deal with. But nothing compares to the menus of the Blackmagic camera. They are just so intuitive and so easy to use. There was virtually no learning curve with these menus. You just, it just makes sense. You just touch what you need. If you want to change the frame rate, you touch where the frame rate is. You want to change the ISO, you touch ISO and it brings the slider up for you. Just so simple and easy to use. I think that's worth mentioning. And then the other thing that's really good to me is I, I just feel more involved in the creative process when using this camera. I don't know what it is. It's not just the manual focus. It's just something about it. I just feel like it's kind of hard to explain until you, you use a camera like this, but I, I just really, it's kind of like the image. You can't really explain it. It just looks a little bit different, uh, but 
just something about using the camera. I just feel very much like I'm involved in what I'm doing creatively and it just, it brings out more creativity to me with that camera. At least I feel like I am, maybe I'm not, but I just really enjoy the process of using the camera. It's just, I enjoy it. And that's partially because of the menus. As far as image quality, all of these modern cameras, whether it be from Canon or Sony or Blackmagic, Fuji, they, they all have amazing image quality. If you shoot in log and you know how to expose properly, you can achieve the same quality image that looks pretty similar on all of them. So it is freezing cold. So let me get back inside to edit. Let me try and edit this in there and let you guys continue watching this video. So sorry for the mistake. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. I, I don't think you haven't mentioned that in this video, but it's okay. If you like it, you'll subscribe. Image is, is key on this. Flexibility with the grading. The Kodak, the B-Raw Kodak that's in it is really, really good to grade. It's, I mean, it just, it's better than the Sony Kodak, let's be honest. The image has just a little bit more of an organic look to it. I, I venture to say cinematic, hate to even say that word, but I really, really have fun using this camera. I feel like I'm involved when I'm using it. Probably the biggest thing that I'd say about this camera that I think's the negative would be, I feel like it doesn't feel as solidly built as my Sony cameras. It definitely feels cheaper. The plastic, and I'm not afraid of plastic, I don't mind plastic, but it just feels like it's a cheaper grade plastic. It feels kind of hollow. The buttons just feel cheap. But then again, the image you're getting at the price you get here and all the features you have in it, I realize corners are gonna be cut somewhere. So I would say my biggest uh, gripe, if there was a gripe about this camera, my biggest concern is uh, durability. The durability of this camera, I feel like I have to be careful. I think you could break this thing pretty easily. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys can leave comments down there and let me know. But that would probably be my biggest fear is this thing just doesn't feel as durable as the Sony cameras. That's that's probably uh, the thing that I think is the worst about it. Had I bought this camera before I bought the FX3 or the FX6, I may have never bought them. I may have just stayed in the Blackmagic ecosystem. I like this camera that much. I really, really like it a lot. All right, so let's go from the a7 IV, and I'm just gonna switch to this real quick, just to give you a sort of a, a sense of what I like about this camera and what this is using the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. It's tough because I have to manually focus. There's a probably a, about a 20% chance that I'm actually in focus somewhat, potentially, right now. Um, I have no external monitor, and you can't see yourself. And I probably should have done this like next to a tree or something that I could have got in focus next to me, but I didn't do that. We're, we're doing it the hard way. That's how we roll here on this channel. So this is the black magic. If I'm in focus and this looks good, you know, hopefully let's see, let's just see. We'll go here, over here. I've got to be in focus somewhere in this range, right? Maybe if I just sit here for a second, this isn't really a vlogging camera. This is not a camera you set up and do yourself. Anyways, I'm not even sure about how my audio is going to sound with this. If this is good, give it a thumbs up. If this is bad, still give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Do you think, you know, there's a place, I, I'm not a brand loyalist to either brand, whether it's Sony, Canon, Blackmagic, any of those. I'm not really a brand loyalist with any of these things. I'm more of a, a fan of the tool that's the best for the job. And in some instances, this Blackmagic 6K Pro is the best for the job. This particular instance we're in right now, it's not the best tool. The Sony would be the better tool, but there are times where this is a better tool for certain creative projects, certain projects where you need that raw codec. It's a much better tool. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.